Pterodactyl here, and I guess we're gonna be doing another uh, little segment on the Ride Master called Total Engine Rebuild. Well, I started to freshen up this Scotson engine, and I'm surprised this thing even ran, let alone run at 4,000 RPM when I was over speeding it. Look at these here points. I took them points out, and that's just how they looked. All dirty and oily, and that thing started pretty good. We need to pull it, pull it a couple of times. It fired right up. Fired up, fired up, fired up. So I, I contacted the local place where I get my uh, Kroller and Tecumish parts, because they said they got some Wisconsin parts. And they said, if we got any Wisconsin parts, we want to get rid of them. So you can have them cheap. So the only parts they had for me were the crank seals. Look at them. Those are the crankshaft seals. They're cork. They charged me 98 cents a piece. They had two left. I said, I'll take both. They had the oil pan gasket. They charged me $1.13. They practically gave me these parts. They said, we want them gone. We're not ordering any more. Valve cover gasket was leaking. Look at this. This was cork too. It's all falling apart. I'll make a new one out of gasket paper. That one I'm not going to buy. I can just make that. So I pulled the oil pan and look. Look what I found. Excrement. Look at it. And I changed the oil on this thing after I got it. I'm surprised I didn't blow it up the way I was revving the snot out of it. And then this is the oil pump here. And there's a screen down there. Look at all that excrement. I'm going to have to clean that up because I was going to freshen it up because it had oil leaks and I was going to paint the block and everything and I'm like oh geez I'm really getting deep into this thing so I noticed it had a little bit of a knock to it when I was running it which was probably the piston slapping but there's no ridge on here so now I gotta hunt for some piston rings. And there's a company I contacted out in California and that supposedly they make rings for this AKN. So I'm waiting to hear back from them. If not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a valve job too while I got it apart. So hopefully I can get this thing back together before my friction disc comes. This Wisconsin engine is the weirdest engine I've ever encountered. I've never dug this deep into one of these engines before because they're not real common. Look at this piston. What do you see that's so funny about it? It's got four piston rings. One, two, three, four. Most small engines got three. This one's got four. That's a little odd, ain't it? And check this out. Looks like somebody didn't machine this right. What do you see funny in here? Look at where these tappets are. They're not centered on the bottom of the valve stem. They're offset. That's weird. I wonder what the reasoning behind that is. Maybe some of y'all out there know what it is. I've never seen nothing like that. Look at, they're not they're not centered. They're off kilter a little bit. And the lifters are, you know, it's not like it was machined wrong or something. I think it was done that way intentionally. Cuz there's the there's the lifters and the cam and the lobes are right on the center of them. Some weird technology, boy, let me tell you. Wisconsin. Oh, another thing, I forgot. 
My brother Farrell gave me a bunch of Wisconsin parts. And I was digging through that box of Wisconsin parts. Of course, he didn't have any of the ones I needed. But he did have this for the ignition and this gasket. And these aren't the exact points of condenser, but these points are close enough. The only difference I see is this little little nub on the back, but that may just be because they changed it. So I'm going to use these points and these gaskets. Thanks, Farrell. This stuff would end up in the garbage if I told him I didn't want it. Because he said, you want these parts? Because if you don't want them, I'm throwing them in the garbage. I said, I'll take them. Good thing I did. That Wisconsin engine needed more than just some new gaskets to freshen it up. I'm surprised that thing even ran or held together. Because I was revving that thing at about 4,000 RPM. So I started taking it apart to replace all the leaky gaskets and tore into it and found out that the crankshaft and the connecting rod were bad. Remember the oil pan? When I took the oil pan off, I had all that metal in there. Yeah, that was a bad sign right there. So I learned a lot about these Wisconsin engines. Like this one, this part number. This DA70E. That tells me that this is an oversized correcting, uh, connecting rod. Correcting rod. Connecting rod. This is a 20 thousandths over rod. And the crankshaft must have been ground. But I see this little pit. And that looks like it might have been welded up and then ground down again, because there's another one there. And that's usually from being welded. So I mic'd it, and it's egg-shaped. And what it was gonna cost to try to fix this rod, this, this crankshaft, and get another rod, very expensive. So I went on eBay, you know, my favorite store. And I found a standard crank for 45 bucks. That was with the shipping. Because this, this has got a mic one inch. And then I also found a standard, this is a used connecting rod, but it's a standard one. And I got this at Floyd's, and they're Terrell fans over there. Floyd's in Michigan, they sell a lot of used parts. So, if you see that Floyd's on eBay, they're Terrell fans, tell them Terrell sent you. So I got the connecting rod from them. This is a standard one inch bore connecting rod. So, I took some crocus cloth, you know, from that band, Crocus, my favorite band. And I polished up the journal, and I took some crocus cloth, kind of polished up, the connecting rod a little bit because this has got a Babbitt insert in there. There's Babbitt in these rods. This isn't like a, a Tecumish or a Briggs rod where it's just an aluminum rod with a real smooth bore. They actually put glue in like an insert. As you can see here, I started to chip it away so you could see. So this is Babbitt that is somehow glued in there. And then of course we needed some piston rings. So I took the rod, torqued it to the, to the crankshaft, and I put my plastic gauge in there, and I got 2000s clearance, which is good. That's what we want. So we got a good crank and a good rod now. And then I went on eBay, and I found a set of piston rings. 20 over is what I got. And then here's the block, all ready to go. All clean, 
I dingle balled the cylinder with my home. In case you don't know what dingle ball in the cylinder means, that's one of these homes with the little dingle balls on it. That gives a nice crosshatch. Did that. Cut my valves. Cut the seats. Set my end clearances. Remember I was showing you how the valves sit in there and they don't sit straight on there? I'll show you that again. On later blocks, they lined it up. It tells you all that in the manual, this manual that I got, which you can find this manual online. It's got all the specs in there, how to put everything together. So I bought oversized rings. Then I took the rings and stuck them in the bore. I left one undone so I could show you. And see how it overlaps. Then I marked it, took the wizard wheel and cut it. And then I went in the manual and it said between 12 and 22 thousandths ring end gap you want. So I made mine at 15. So I went ahead, see? And got my ring end gap clearance on these oversized rings. So remember, you could do that. You could take a set of rings and Cut them. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. This ain't a space show. Just a small engine. So again, found these on eBay. And then now that I pulled everything apart to set my end clearance, I need those gaskets. So remember I said, you know, I bought some gaskets and I found the seals and I was gonna make other gaskets. Well, I do need the crank seals. So then I went on eBay and I found a complete gasket set. So some of them gaskets that I bought I don't need. But like I said, this one I only paid $1.13 for. So now we got everything to put it back together. I started painting stuff. I got a lot of the parts painted already. Got the carver trader, got the new choke lever on. I got the carver trader all painted up. Looks pretty, don't it? Got the head painted. Got my fuel line all polished up. So now I got everything to put it back together. So I want to talk about the seals and the oil pan. We're going to talk about that next. So this is what you have to do in order to replace the seals on here, in case you're doing one of these engines. Now say you can't get these seals. Say they're not available or you can't find them anywhere. I thought about that and I thought there's gotta be a seal that'll fit a regular rubber seal. So I found these Briggs seals. 391086S is in Sam. And Rotary makes them, and there's the part number 1445. So what you're gonna have to do is, because you can see that this seal will fit, and it fits tight. So what you have to do is put the seal in here like this, and then you have to take a screwdriver in the corner, tap, the seal down in here until it seats in the bottom of here. And then once you get it in there, it's gonna be loose. It's gonna be loose in there. So what you're gonna have to do after that is then take some black silicone and silicone it, put a bunch of silicone in there to hold the seal from moving and from leaking past again. So here, let me just put one in there to show you. 
Because you're probably thinking, why don't you just show us? So go right in the corner. And evenly tap it in there. See if it's tight till you get down to the bottom. See it's in there. Then it's going to want to kind of maybe rock on you a little bit. So just take some black silicone and put some black silicone all around this edge here. You know, you don't want to fill it up in here. Just want to get some around here. You're not going to need this. You're not going to be able to put that back in there. So don't even worry about that. But you can use this Brick seal, if you can't find one. There's an, there's an alternative for you. So now I wanna show you how this little oil pump system works that they got. Now there's a rod in here, you can see it right here, that works off the camshaft. And this thing was bent, this rod, so I had to fix that. I got it as close as I could. You can still see it at the top. See it spins out of whack a little bit. I think this motor had probably thrown a rod at some point. That's why they put that oversized rod in there. They probably had to have it ground down and put an oversized rod and whoever did the rebuild didn't do a very good job. So I took this all apart to clean it because remember all them boogers and stuff that were in there? So this thing works pretty simple. I took it all apart, cleaned it, and this is where that rod goes to pump it. So how this works is when there's oil in here and that camshaft is spinning, pushing that rod, pushing this pump, it fills this with oil. This gets full of oil in here. And then when the connecting rod comes around, it dips in here to splash the oil. And then in the manual, they tell you which way the oil hole on the bottom of the rod is to be facing. So it's very important to know which way this faces, which is in the manual. And we'll go over that once we get the piston back in and the crank and all that back in. So they tell you to test this before you put the engine in and what they tell you to do is fill this with oil and then push the plunger and it should fill this up, see? And of course when it gets full up to here it's going to cascade over the side and go back in the pan. But that's how that works. And that's how you test it. And there's your dinner. Now all I have to do is reassemble it. As I mentioned before, I resurfaced the valves, lapped them in already ahead of time. Already set my clearance as per the manual. And they want a valve clearance between 11 and 13. So of course you're gonna wanna go right in the middle and be 12, which is what I did. So remember I was telling you how they're off center? Look at that. See how that doesn't line up? How it's off kilter? Now, don't ask me why they did that. Some genius over there, engineer at the time, must have thought it was funny or something. I don't know. But in the manual, it tells you. 
The valve tappets on the Model AKN, which is what we got, were offset slightly from the valve stem. But the cylinder block has been redesigned so that the valve stems and tappets are now in line. So back in the day, if you replace this block, your new block, they were going to be lined up. They weren't going to be offset. So here we got us a rare bird, I guess. Or we got us an old original engine because it's offset. So yeah, this, this manual is a treasure trove of information. I'm glad I went through and read it all. So I went and gussied out the ignition system on it. Doesn't it look nice? Did a nice job on that cover too. Sandblasted it, gave it that textured look. And then I clear coated it. And I put the new points in. And what's nice about this ignition, you could test it without having it in there. So I got my spark tester hooked up. I need a good spot to hook the ground. Let's hook it right there. And when you spin this, you can watch it spark. See? Woo! That's how you test it. And we got good hot spark. Again, surprise this engine ran with as bad as shape it was in. You know what that tells me? This is a tough dog. This is the dog I want in my fight. Crude, tough, scrappy. It's a scrappy engine, ain't it? That's what we're gonna call it, scrappy. All right, you got a name now, you're scrappy. Now I'm going to show you how to put these cork seals in, in case you're putting them in. First thing you want to do is put the cork seal in here. In this ring. Then you're going to want to find a socket that's going to fit in there. In this case, the one I've got is inch and a quarter. And then you set that in there, kind of get it centered even. And then you're going to take a hammer and you're going to tap it. Into place. Making sure that the, get, the cork seal is all the way up against the bottom of here. Got a nice good seat. And then you can check it to make sure you got a good seal. Yeah, nice and tight. Now it looks like it's got to go a little bit more over here on this side. And then of course we're going to put some lubricant on there to help with that. Now to get them out, you know, you just take a screwdriver and jam it through the old seal and then just tap it back and forth until you knock this out. Now on this side, this was already all danged up. So somebody had replaced this seal at one time. But the old seal is hard as a carp, look at it. It's all hard and brittle. And this was the one that was leaking. So I'm gonna have to take this on some plate steel and take a punch and I'm gonna have to try to straighten this out and get it back to its original shape and then we'll put the seal in on this side. So now we're ready to put our crankshaft in. So I went ahead and took the gel lube 
our gel lube and I did these bearings and on the crankshaft you got to look for this dot that punch mark on that tooth just like the tooth in my head then on the camshaft you have to find the two punch marks And then you just simply drop the crankshaft in and make sure that you've got that tooth with your punch mark. There we go, like so. Now your cam timing is correct. Now, after I put the new seal in here, now we've got to take these gaskets, these new gaskets, and if you see, you have five of one thickness and two of another thickness. So there's seven of these gaskets in there. And then what you do is you stack them up like they did here. These are the old ones, see? And that's how we achieve our end play on the crankshaft. Now in the manual, they're calling between two and four thousandths end play. So you're gonna have to sit there and put this, take this on and off a bunch of times until you get that two to four. So what I suggest is once you get that two to four, then put the seal in. Because it's gonna be tight with that seal on there and it's gonna be kinda of hard to tell. So I would just go ahead and figure out your end play and then take this off because you're gonna be taking it on and off a bunch of times. And then once you get your end play figured out, then go ahead and put the seal in. So this flange wasn't really fitting in there too good. It was kind of tight. So what I did is I sanded this a little and I sanded this rim so I could get it to fit in there. So now we're at zero end play right now. And I took a feeler gauge and went up in here to figure out our thickness and 21 thousandths is what I came up with. So they want two to four. So we're gonna have to add to that. So if we had three thousandths, that's 24 thousandths. So we should figure out 24 thousandths of our gaskets and then we'll put them on there then we'll go ahead and bolt this down and then we'll see what kind of if we get that two to four thousand cent play two to four isn't very much so we'll do that so in the manual it tells you that there's five gaskets that are six thousandths and one gasket that's three thousandths but we have five that are six and we have two that are three. So if these are six thousandths, we got six, 12, 18, 24. And that's what we want, 24 thousandths to get between two and four thousandths. So this is what we're gonna start with. And we'll tighten them down and see what we got. We may have to add three we have to take some out. All right, we got those in there, those four six thousandths. Tighten these down. I can feel a little play. So to be safe, I'm gonna add one of these three thousandths. 
All right, that seemed to have done it, that extra 3,000, that real paper thin one. Because look, I know what you're saying. You should have a dial indicator on there, Terrell. It'll tell you exactly how many thousands it is if you had a, a dial indicator. Well, again, I'm doing this for the guy that don't have all them fancy tools. We're doing it by old school feel it. Two to four. And you know what? Judging from my micrometer ears and micrometer hand that's hooked to my brain, which goes to my ear, it's about two to four thousand. There's your dinner. Now I got all the ring end gaps cut. Got the end of my rings all filed, deburred. That's another thing. Whenever you cut rings, you're always going to want to make sure to. Make sure there's no sharp burrs or nothing. I got the rings installed, and then I turn them 90 degrees apart. So this ring is here, this ring is 90 degrees from that one, and then these upper two compression ring, rings are 90 degrees apart from each other up here. Now this has two compression rings. Isn't that something, how they wanted to do that? So now we can install the pistione, and then I could tape it off and paint the block. One thing I noticed on these Wisconsin engines, boy, they drill and tap all the way through. All these holes on the block go into the block. So what I'm gonna do is when I reassemble it, I'm gonna put a little black silicone on the threads to kind of help seal the oil from weeping through the threads. Kind of give it cleaner. And when you're installing the rod on the dipper here, there's an oil hole. And then you got your arrow match mark. I gotta put my glasses on, I can't see. So there's the arrows on the rod. That's your match marks. And then on the dipper, there's an oil hole. And it tells you in the book, connecting rod should be assembled to the crankshaft so the oil hole in the cap will be towards the carburetor side of the engine. The oil hole in the cap, this is the cap. Because there are oil holes up here on the rod too. So that means the hole in the cap towards the carburetor. So that means this piston's going in like this. So you're gonna wanna turn the crankshaft so the journal is down at the bottom. So when we put the piston in, the rod doesn't run into that. And then you're gonna wanna lubricate the cylinder with either some motor oil or some type of assembly lube. And I went ahead and pre-lubed it with our gel lube. Now I'm gonna install my piston ring compressor. And noting again that the hole and the arrows, there's the arrows, there's the hole towards the carburetor. So the rod goes in this way. And now I'm going to take the handle of a hammer and we're going to tap that in. So I'm going to square this up, my compressor. Make sure it's all square, like taps, and gently tap it in. Don't force it. That's how you break a ring. All right, Pistione is in. Now we can flip this thing over. Now 
Now we're going to want to guide that onto the crank journal. So now that I can see I'm gonna because it done turned on me a little bit. But now that I got it started, it centered itself up. Now we can get it closer so we can so I'm turning the crank and tapping on the piston at the same time there we go so now we're at the very bottom we're at the bottom of the board get it a little more another couple taps There we go. Now some more gel lube on our journal. Here's our cap. We know that hole goes towards the Kyber Trader. Here's our locking hardware. It's up to you. You can put a little Loctite on the connecting rods if you don't trust these locking tabs. And then now we can torque it. And our manual tells us 14 to 18 foot pounds. That's why it's important to have a manual. Now pay close attention to these locking tabs. See how two corners are bent over? That's because it goes this way, like this, on the rod. That's to keep this from turning. And then you bend those tabs up against it. And then just go ahead and snug them down by hand. Then get your torque wrench and torque them to the 14 to 18. So you got two foot pounds in between. So, you know, you can go 17, go 16, go 15, go 14. So if you want to go inch pounds, you just times 12. So 18 times 12 is 216 inch pounds. So since we've got since we can go between 14 and 18, I'm just gonna go to 200. Which is what most connecting rods are anyway on these small engines. Because you may be going, I don't, I don't have a foot pound torque wrench, I got an inch pound. So now they're tight, so now I'm gonna bend the tab up to lock against it. You only need to really bend one. The other one's just in case you have to disassemble it again, because when you bend this back and forth too many times, you're gonna break it off, then you gotta buy a new keeper. So you really only need to bend up the one tab. You don't have to bend up both. So I'm gonna bend that one because it lines up with this flat. All right, give it a couple spins. Nice and tight, nice and snug the way we want it. Now I'm gonna mask everything off and paint the block. And then just start putting everything back on. Put the ignition on, the head, the blower shroud, and then we'll be able to, as Elkskin says, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Look at him, he looks like a green booger with that hoodie on. Now as you can see, we're almost complete here. I'm putting it together. One thing I want to talk to you all about is this little crankcase breather. It's got this little cap on there. 
Now inside there is this quarter inch steel ball. So you may take one of these apart and not realize that's in there. That's almost like a check valve. And that drops in there. And then I went and got me a stainless steel cotter fin to put in there. I think I'm gonna, I don't know which way I should put it in from. This way or the other way? I'm gonna put it in from that way. And then I'll bend that. Now one other thing I wanna go over. When I went to reassemble it, when I put the engine on top of the oil pan, I went ahead and filled the oil pan with oil and then pumped up that oil pump kind of prime it ahead of time. You just don't want to fill it with oil when you get done. You want to have oil in there already. So I just went ahead and filled up the oil pan a little bit on the bottom and then filled up that reservoir and then I stuck the engine on top and then carefully put the bolts in from underneath. And like I said, I took black silicone and put it on the threads of all these bolts to kind of help oil from weeping through. So now we're ready to reinstall the ignition. And that has to be put in a certain way. In case you don't know. So, on the cam is a mark right there. See that mark? And that mark, since that tooth is on an angle, goes up to here. So this little plug here, you take out, and you should be able to see that other mark right there on that tooth. Then when you install your module, you have a mark on here. And that mark's gotta line up with that mark through that window. Otherwise your ignition timing is going to be off. So that's on a tooth and that other mark is on a space. So that's how you make sure you put this in right. So I already went ahead and I put some, uh, some of that high tech sealant on this gasket. Now I should probably just take the points cover off so I can turn the gear to line it up better. There we go. See? I don't know if the camera can see it. So here's that little plug we took out and these are the two marks you're looking for. They need to line up. Well, there it is, all done, all finished, all nice and pretty. And as you can see, I added to the muffkin. I took another five horse Briggs muffkin and welded it to the other one. And then when you weld it, you know, it's like trying to weld a pop can. So get it welded together and then the weld isn't real pretty when you grind it down. So I did put some taro putty on there, like Bondo, and sanded it, but I wasn't sure it was going to work. It says it could take 500 degrees, and it did work, but it's a lot of work sanding it down and make it look nice, so it was just easier for me to take some of that alum aluminum flashing that you buy at a hardware store, like I used on Palomino. I had some of that left over, and I cut a piece. And you know what works good for cutting this? We got one of those old paper cutters like you used in school. So I laid that in there and cut it nice and straight. Then I just used some aluminum 1-8 pop rivets and pop riveted it on there. And then it was kind of weak, you know, where I screwed it in here. So I had a thick I had a real thick washer, a big washer that was the same diameter as that and I had to grind the inside out and I welded that thick 
washer on there. And that stiffened it up, made it stronger. And then this badge or plate, engine plate, of course with everything nowadays, you can get a new reproduction one. So I ordered a new uh, plate, a reproduction one. I found one online. And uh, of course, it was on eBay. So all I gotta do is, when I get it, is engrave the uh, numbers on there. I'm gonna try to engrave the numbers in there. And if not, then I'll just leave it blank. The AKN, you know what AKN stands for? Another Kroller, not. <laughs> That's what AKN stands for. Another Kohler, not. All right, so. As the Elkskins, the human shop rack says, Fire it up! 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 Now I notice when I choke it, because it's got a new choke shaft, and I go to start it, it immediately takes it off a choke for you. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but I got it on choke. Ah! Let me open up the high speed a little bit. I think I need some more dinosaur juice. You see, and it stinks too, boy. Good thing we're doing this outside. Hey, not only does it run good, but it looks good. Well, still waiting on our friction disc that I had machined, so that'll be next, but at least we got the engine rebuilt. And uh, I'm real happy with the way it turned out. It runs good now, a lot of work. A little bit of money. As Ronnie says, I had to do a little bit of money. I had to put a little bit of money into it. So the engine rebuild part's done. We get our friction disc. We'll do that experiment next, see which friction disc worked the best. And then once we do that little short video on that, which I'm sure will be a long video, then I'm going to strip it all down and we're going to paint it. Everything will get painted and powder coated. But we gotta do the friction disc next. So at least the engine's done. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. Carol fixes all. See this handsome devil here? That's me. Follow me with your ride masters and your Wisconsin engine on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store and buy some Carol apparel. Spark plug necklace, hat, other stuff, go check it out. And as always, 
There's your dinner. Woo! Scott said, AKA, another crawler. Nice.